This is my sword and shield. I'm here today in response to the Master's will. And I know that if I'm true, there's nothing that he won't do. You believe it, don't you? Yeah. Amen. 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 And, and in our last uh, look at chapter 18, where we still are, <laughs> and which I understand from wisdom last night that we're going to finish it today. <laughs> Thanks to Brother Bro Love said we finished in 18 days. So, uh, last time we talked about his character, right? right? You know, David spent a lot of time sharing with us the fact that, you know, his character was a representation of God. And so he wanted at all times to make sure he was walking according to the things that reflect a right relationship with God, right? Absolutely. Some of his characteristics had to do with being humble, right? Being honest, mm -hmm. being righteous and clean, mm -hmm. upright and pure. Mm -hmm. Those were the characteristics that David laid out for us in our last study as an example of where we should be in our lives, right? Yeah. Well, now he's transitioning to what one writer said, and I think it may have been the author that we're studying, and we're, we're on page 77, by the way, to a military hymn. This, this portion, verses 28 through 45, it's looked upon as being like a military hymn. And the title of this study, as it laid out to us by the author, is that God equips when we submit to him. Amen. That, that's, yes. I mean, we, we, we've lived that, right? Amen. 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 God equips. God equips. Right. God equips when we submit. And so, this part of our study, David is showing us uh, through his life how that actually happened. And, and, and as we go through the study, I think we'll be able to, to equate that to things that have been happening in our lives. Amen. Uh, question is, what, what, did, what did God accomplish during the reign of Saul that, that, that leads us up to sort of being able to understand and see how God will equip us when we submit. What, what did he accomplish? One thing, uh, just to get us started, he, uh, he disciplined his people, didn't he? Right? I mean, the author tells us that. He disciplined his people for what? Bad behavior. What did he say? For running ahead, right? Yeah. And make us all the king. Making him the king. And you know that story back in 1 Samuel 20. God had it all set for them. And they got jealous of other nations with, with heads of states, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, it, haven't we done that before where we're not satisfied with what we got? Mm -hmm. Because we see Joe across the street and down the block mm -hmm. with something that we covet, right? Mm -hmm. And so we want it too. It's called keeping up with the Joneses. Keeping up with the Joneses. Spoken like a true Jones. No pun intended. No pun intended. Is that Jim or Jim? There it is. Hey, Ray, I'm just to pick back a uh -huh. 15 seconds. Okay, sure. Uh, sidebar. Did, sidebar. Colonel, I heard you say keeping up with the Joneses. And I tell you, I'd seen, I witnessed just Saturday. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, Ray, I'm talking about, boy, I seen the colonel with a beautiful ladder. I said, I want me a ladder. That boy ain't got a ladder, man. Want that ladder. But the colonel don't even know where the ladder come from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> but you know, it's that, it's, 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 as Brother Darrell was saying, mm -hmm. it's not just a case of wanting, it's a case of literally getting. Yeah, yeah. And still wanting something else oh, yeah, yeah. after, yeah, after right. God yeah, provided yeah. you. That's right. You know, you have the best. Oh, and the two examples that I used to see is through buying homes and buying cars. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, you, you oh, yeah. buy a house and you, you see somebody else got this and they got that. Right, you, know, right. you know, you should have had this. Should have yeah. had this. Yeah. As opposed to saying, thank you, Lord, yeah. 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 what I have. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Right. yeah, you always want something. The grass is always green. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. On the other side. And that new car smell goes away. Yeah, you had to go away. They got cans of spray for them now. Just, yeah, so you, can, so you can keep it. But that's what he, uh, he, he's saying is that uh, uh, in the midst of all of the things that God had promised and, and had done for them, yes. uh, they were still unsatisfied, and so the action that he took was he had to discipline them. Mm -hmm. Second thing is that even while they were doing all this stuff, uh, Saul still had an opportunity to be forgiven, didn't he? Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gave him a chance to repent. Didn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. He had a chance to redeem himself. And, and that's part of the, the trap, isn't it? Of, of wanting something else. You get so far into it that yes. you forget about yes. the fact that there's a day coming when you got to pay a price for that. Yes. Yes. I mean, we, we see this playing out in politics, don't we? Today. You know, I mean, and, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's twisted on both sides. Because a lot of the stuff that's happening to the other side today, they did yep. 20, 30 years ago. That's right. Because people are now throwing it back into their faces. Yes. When all they needed to do was just do the right thing. Amen. 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 Do the right thing. Amen. Do the right thing. And then the, the, the last part of what God accomplished during this period is the fact that he gave David all of the experiences that he needed in order to let God do the work. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. He gave him all the experiences that he needed. Yeah. You know, and I, I, we won't get through with the sidebar, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> one of the uh, things that's, that's, that's greatly appreciated is when people pray for... Good afternoon, When 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 people pray for for different things mm -hmm. and their response is that I didn't get what I'm praying for, God didn't give me what I'm praying for. Mm -hmm. uh, many times it's the case that God is still <laughs> Is still preparing me or whoever for that that he has down the road. Mm -hmm. So it, so we see where David uh, went through many trials, but it was a case of expanding the field of his future leadership, yeah. warriorship, yeah. Uh, compassionship, right, and that's whatever right. other ship right. that he, <laughs> that he experienced. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and even the ship that he had to ride on. Yes. Right? <laughs> so, so, yes, sir. I, I just wanted to comment. You know, to, to the very point, uh, deeply, I think if we would only watch the lives of others and learn from them, mm -hmm. I think Saul was the platform for David to learn something mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Not humbling himself, but David did. Yeah. yeah. And to do that, we don't always get that from the lives of others. That's right. You know, and seeing them go through things. Yeah. Yeah. And learning from the, the example of what God has done in their lives. Yeah. We can only embrace that. That's right. That's right. And and, and pay close attention to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what David has done uh, in this passage that we're going through, right? He's demonstrating that he's paid close attention to 
the transformation that has occurred in his life. Yes. So, so that begs the question, does, does God then take time to develop us as servants? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Right? Yes. So, so he, he allows that, that period of growth, doesn't he? Yes. Which is critical for all of us, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, uh, there are some folks who, who, who think that it's, it's supposed to be an instantaneous transformation. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the renewing of your mind doesn't mean that it, it happens like that. That's right. <laughs> that is something called obedience that plays a big role. Yeah, yeah. And early on, when right. when uh, Jesse had a chance to, uh, his father had a mm -hmm. chance to uh, look at the sons, yeah. and the, they put all the other sons up, and right. David continued to be obedient. Yeah. And heard the sheep. You know, throughout David's life, you could see where God was preparing him mm -hmm. for all of these experiences that mm -hmm. he would have to become the godly man that he was. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. While he was out there tending the sheep, she, mm -hmm. it would have been easy for him to be pouting and saying, why, why didn't I come have to be brought back for this gathering? Yes. But that wasn't his concern, was it? His concern was Take care of doing the task. And, and we get confused like that, don't we? Yeah. When we plug, plug into something that is, uh, that is God's work in action, and we may not be out front, but we'll start pouting because, you know, hey, I should be doing that. You know, we may not say it, but in our spirit, you can feel like that, can't you? Amen. And, and, and ultimately, if you don't get it under control and get yourself in line, it'll disrupt everything. Because it'll start affecting others. It may not affect them in a way that causes a, a complete breakdown, but they'll start to be reluctant to do certain things with, you know, to just slow the process down. Yeah. And if God's got you on a mission like he had David on a mission, he, he doesn't want that. <laughs> and, and so David recognized that. He, he, he took himself out of everything, put God in it, and, and made sure that, uh, that he was always in line in terms of his character with carrying out God's mission. And here, he's now going to demonstrate to us that he's paid close attention to everything that God has done for him. So somebody read, and this is going to be a long read, <laughs> verses 28 through 45, and then we'll come back and deal with it. You, Lord. Security. 28, you said? 28 through 45. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against the truth. Mm -hmm. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The, Lord, the Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? Mm -hmm. And who is the rock except our God? Mm -hmm. It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I did not turn back till they were all destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for battle. You humbled my adversaries before me. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight, and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine as wind-blown dust. I trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people. You have made me the head of nations. People I did not know now serve me. Foreigners cower before me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. They all lose heart. Hmm. They come trembling from their strongholds. Stop there, Keith. Yes. All right. Thank you. So, so is it 
How about that? Hmm. How about that? How about that? Chicken, How about that, that y'all? <laughs> 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 yeah. How about that? So, 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 what does David say out front in this in this hymn of, of appreciation, this battle hymn? He says, uh, "You turn my darkness into turn light. Turn darkness into, into light. light. Yes, sir. Come on. Yeah. Come on. In, in, in my Bible, it says that." Uh, mm -hmm. You, O oh Lord, keep my lamp burning. Burning, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, what, what is that saying? Yeah. The fire inside. Fire. Yes. Everything that I am burning. Yeah. To do yes. your will, Lord. Yeah. Yes. He's, I'm, I'm the lamp. Yes. Right? yes. I, I'm the vessel. Yes. But the light inside of me. Right. Is coming from you. That's you. Your grace is your way. That, that's, yeah. that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. And, and, uh, <clears throat> I was reading and said that back in the day, during this time that David is living, that there was an issue about having a dark house. People didn't feel secure. And so one of the things they tried to do is they tried to keep the house bright and lights on all night. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it was a statement of, of comfortableness peace. Uh, it was a statement of, of great worth. Even the poor people made sure that they had a lamp burning in the house all night. Right. <laughs> it didn't change the condition, but they felt secure. Right. That's what David is talking about. Right? He's saying, you know, with your light on inside of me, uh, I have nothing else to worry about. Yes. I have it all. Isn't that how we feel now? Mm -hmm. Knowing that God is inside of us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's amazing how society has transitioned from that day and that time mm -hmm. because now when it gets dark, we know to be inside, lock our doors, you know, protect ourselves from all the evils and the ills that sometimes of lurking out there in the dark. Yeah. And so we don't keep the lights on. That's we right. don't understand that the light is, that we are the vessel and he is the light. That's right. I mean, that's, that's why we hear the saying, we are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are the ones who light it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every room we walk into ought to be just like when you come in here, when the lights are off, lights come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that, that ought to be the atmosphere in which we walk into all, at all times, right? Proverbs 20, verse 27 says, The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. It ain't about us, right? It's the light within. How does the... How does this light refer to us? I mean, what is it? What is it saying that uh, uh, that our actions and motivations ought to be if we are the bearers of that light? They should see uh, God in us, the, the illuminating. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to a see. dark world. Yeah. Yeah. Illuminating. Yeah, that's yeah. what light does. That's what some awesome responsibility mm -hmm. to step forward. Indeed. They should see that light in us as well. Right, right. And, and, and to step forward not to as a demonstration of how bright we can shine, <laughs> but as we talked about David before, it, it, it wasn't a matter of, uh, I just want you to feel my warmth, right? I want to be able to light somebody else's candle. Mm -hmm. All right. yes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, we ought to be lighting other candles. Because we, we are the instrument of God. <clears throat> Once he turns the light on inside of us. And, and, and doesn't it take an outside uh, flame in order to... Light another. Light another. That's evangelism. Yeah, that's right. We ought to pray what? 
Problem? Speak properly. Speak properly. Oh, you better live yeah. properly. Yeah. Yeah. Live properly. Yeah. 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 PLS. Yeah. That, that's where the, in terms of evangelism, that's where that's the, the light is being passed on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's a perfect image of, of what our role ought to be from our family to anybody that is still walking in darkness. <clears throat> The, uh, one of the many things that we ought to remember is that the light isn't coming from us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> That's right. That's right. This little light of mine. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. Yeah. Those words come mm -hmm. glowing back in my head. You know, that passage mm -hmm. from... Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, uh, to Lonnie's point, the light, where did it come from? It mm -hmm. came from he who gave it to us. Yeah. And, if they, and those who don't know the light, if they would see that light in us. Yeah. And we can perpetuate that light. It gets more and increasingly bright. That's right. That's and right. he's more in control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and it ought to be reflected in, in the way we live, right? Yes. Yeah. Because we ought to be living as if we have the power of God inside of us. Amen. I mean, that's the way David was operating. We ought to be living as if we have the power of God inside of us. We ought to be living as if we uh, can demonstrate the brightness of God's love inside of us. And his love ought to shine brightly out of us. Yes. And, and just like David, the, the most outstanding thing that we can demonstrate to people who are walking in darkness is that we have a kinship with God. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and they ought to see it before we even open our mouth. You know, I've seen folks who, young kids who growing up, you can see one that there's something very special about their kid. Just in the way they carry themselves, the way they speak. Perfect example of it was Alan. Is Alan. Oh. As, a, as a kid. Yeah. Remember we used to watch him in the choir? Yes. Yes. You, you knew that God's got his hands on this kid. Amen. Huh. When at rehearsal, he always wanted to pray. Yeah. And we wanted him to pray. Yeah, yeah. Because it made everybody, fired up everybody. Right. You're ready to sing. Yeah. That's the light, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and as the, the word is telling us, we are the light shining out of darkness. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's critical. Because... Uh, uh, David is saying, my deliverance from the enemies by God was taking me out of darkness. I mean, just think about ourselves. That was certainly a period in my life when I was in darkness. My Lord. You know, I mean, I, I can remember it. This is not this is not a bragging moment, don't yes. <laughs> it's, yes. it's a shouting moment. It's a shouting moment, yes. that's right. Yes. <laughs> because Amen. God brought us out. Yeah. Amen. Uh, David was wanting to demonstrate that uh, I'm not the master. I serve a master that you can't see. But I can tell you that everything I'm doing, everything that's happening in my life, is not because of me. You know, whether it's sickness, whether it's jobs, whatever it is. If we walk as if we're walking in favor, which we are, then God gets the credit, right? Amen. Amen. That's right. Because people walking in darkness are trying to figure out, well, why, is, why is that person so happy? Don't they know what they're going through? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, you know, it's, it's under control. David had a lot of other darkness spots, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. 
I mean, think about his yeah. personal life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You know, the issue with Bathsheba, you know, which led to other things. He had dark spots with regards to his family. Right? Son, want, son wanted to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> dark spots. Can, can you think of any dark spots in your life? No. Dark spots right now. Yeah. That that if if you were not uh, mm -hmm. illuminated on the inside by yes. God, yes. you you wouldn't give up. You give up. You yeah. wouldn't know what to do with it. That's right. But the illumination of God causes those dark spots to disappear. That's good news. Because you bring light into it. What's that? That's good news. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Money, money. And even if those dark spots do not go away, the thing that we do know is that God has his hands on us. Yeah. Because he didn't promise necessarily that he would take us away from that's us. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, right. But he could be carried us through. No. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and, and David is saying, you know, mm -hmm. I know there are dark spots ahead for me. Mm -hmm. I know they're there. But I also know that God's going to provide the light to turn them Yes. To brighten them up when I get there. Yes. yes. And that's in all of our lives. Yes. That's something you about either, being faithful. Yeah. Be trust, faithful. Trust. Trust. Trust and obey. Trust. 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 That's right. Because you know they're coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know they're coming. In fact, uh, one author said that there, there are three dark shadows in every life. The dark shadow of sin. Right? Amen. Transgressions uh, because of our will to want to do something different than what God has already planned and told us what to do. Second one is the shadow of pain. Mm -hmm. Shadow of pain. You know, that doesn't necessarily have to be bodily pain. I mean, uh, I read someplace that the pain that the mind goes through sometimes mm -hmm. is far worse than what mm -hmm. some of the pain in your body can mm -hmm. explore. Mm -hmm. Pain in your heart. Amen. Pain in your heart. Yes. That's a shadow. That's darkness. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is the shadow of death. And, and, and we know that death has been lightened because of the sacrifice of the Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. Right? We, we got that light already. Three, three shadows, three dark spots that every human life is going to experience at some time. And we have to remember that, that we have the light, as Dave is pointing out, to to really kind of rush at him, right? What, what does he say? Uh, help, with your help, I can advance against a troop. What, what, is, what does that point bring up in your mind, military guy? <laughs> I can conquer the hill. Huh? I can conquer the hill and conquer those that are my enemies. That's right. <clears throat> yeah. hey, come out of the trenches. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on out. The battlefield could be anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere at any time. For us, facing those dark places, it's, it's charged. It's not time to sit back and, and, and go into that war is me mode. You know, we, we ought to face it with confidence. No matter how, what, how big or how small it is. It, there are some small things, boy, that can stop you in, in your tracks. Mm -hmm. Some small items of life. Amen. A, a, a small dark place. Stop you in your tracks. But David is showing us that we're supposed to 
charge the troops. Yes. Uh, situation seems impossible. That's not for us. That, that wasn't for David. Remember, we talked about David. David didn't go out and attack anybody to get what he received. It all came to him because they, they tried to attack him. And the end result is God delivered them right into his hand. That was a big distinction that the author made. He didn't go out just to attack something just to be attacking it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was attacked it because he was defending himself against their invasion. That's right. And ultimately, as he pointed out in this passage, <laughs> they're bowing at his feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't claim any credit for that, did he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I too far ahead when there was a situation when um, David's and his men watched the ball sheep and um, sort of the custom was that the uh, people who watched the sheep and protected them from other criminals who would come to try to steal them, mm -hmm. that they were given some type of, uh, if you will, stipend or some type of money or reward, you know, reward. thanks, mm -hmm. I needed that word. Mm -hmm. And um, evidently, the, Nabal was so cheap and Foolish, that was the interpretation of his name, that mm -hmm. he ended up not offering them anything. You know, and so they kind of hung around, and he sent, David sent somebody back to Nabal to um, hang around, and, you know, you didn't give us anything, and that's a custom that we are expecting. Mm -hmm. And so he was so angry, he pulled together all of his forces, and he was getting ready to go and attack Nabal. Mm -hmm. And evidently, uh, Abigail stepped in, Nabal's wife, Abigail stepped in and mm -hmm. kept him from, uh, yeah. kept David, if you will, so from man is stupid, don't Yeah, he crazy, <laughs> crazy, <laughs> he's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, but my point is about David being so angry, understanding that God, um, Sometimes we try to take on our own will, mm -hmm. and you know he was going to go and attack and kill this man, anybody else that was around him, and mm -hmm. uh, she stepped in almost as an angel, if you will, yeah. Um, yeah. to stop him and hold him back and remind him who he is. That's right. That's right. And 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 you, you got to believe that David was, was was looking at all time. Remember we said yeah. for the, for God in everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked about the fact that he. Mm -hmm. He, he, he saw the rocks as being mm -hmm. a representation of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Storm came, and he Storm. saw that as being a representation yeah. of God. Yeah, and God. so I'm sure that when Abigail showed up, he, he, he's, oh, yeah, wait a minute now. <laughs> <laughs> I need to check myself. Mm -hmm. and, and we get signals like that. <coughs> because yes. as, because yes. as Sister... Sister, sister, well, sister, sister, the, the uh, brother Curtis' wife is <laughs> uh, saying, saying over there by uh, uh, Abigail mm -hmm. uh, in, in the sermon Sunday at 9.30, uh, it was related to Shemil, S-H-I-M-E-I-L, mm -hmm. who was cursing David and throwing stones. Okay. And he looked at it as... Well, maybe this is what God yeah. wants me to do. Yeah. 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 God. So God has him doing this. That's you know, mean. as opposed to me, mm -hmm. uh, you be throwing stones, mm -hmm. I'll probably be returning. That's right. Uh, That's right. In fact, some of David's <laughs> folks said, <laughs> Boulders. Some of David's folks Boulders. said, you know, go up on that hill and take him out. Yeah. yeah. You know, because yeah. you know, he's following him yeah. along yeah. the cliff, That's right? right. Yeah. That's right. So he's so screaming out. <laughs> he's definitely a great example yeah, yeah. of the way that we over are and over supposed and over. to act. That's right. That's exactly right. And seeing God in everything. Yeah, yeah. And 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 David said that uh, in, in verse uh, in that same verse twenty nine he says, "With my God, I can scale wall." Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it, that's saying. If I stay focused on the God inside of me, there ain't nothing out there that I can't overcome. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. I was reading this, this piece about this young soldier, 15 years old in World War II, I think it was, in battle. First contact. First firefight. 
and he froze in fear. Couldn't, couldn't do anything. And his, uh, his lieutenant came up beside him and put his hands on his hand and says, that's all right, son. He says, uh, same thing happened to me. And he said he told him that uh, just a few minutes you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And he said that the, the impact of that instantly gave him courage that said, oh, I can handle this. Yes. And he went on to be one of, the, one of the real victors of that confrontation. That's, that's, the, that's the spirit that David's talking about here, about right. recognizing that God's inside of him. It's like that lieutenant touching that private's hand. Saying, it's okay, son, don't worry about it. That's real. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I've been there before. Cause, I mean, look at, look at the Christ we serve. Yes. Yes. He's been put through everything that we're going through. Yes. Yeah. And yet endured, right? Yes. Didn't affect it. That's our example. Mm -hmm. Like that lieutenant was that private's example that gave him the courage he needed to to overcome. David said, there's nothing out there, there's not a wall that I can't go over. Mm -hmm. He didn't say I, that I can't tear down. He said, no, I can, I can go over. Can I just uh, you can say read the version I have, and I think it, it, it seemed to bring it home to me. It says, now in your strength, mm -hmm. I can scale any wall. So he's seeing the strength within the Lord, yes. giving him that Mm -hmm. It's not his own strength, but it's your strength, yeah. his strength, yeah. that gives him that ability to conquer anything. That's right. That's right. It's, it's, it's awesome. Isn't it? It's just so mm -hmm. awesome. And, and and now that we have seen and been given the light of God, ha have you encountered uh, walls of sin in your life that you kind of just jumped over? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, can't, can't you think of situations like that? I mean, haven't you ever been to that spot where you've said, man, if I, like I used to be? Where would I be? You know, you, you, you'd, meet, you'd meet Mr. Jones and his four sons in my old life. Yes, sir. But now I can, I don't have to tear down the wall. I can jump right over. There's a word in that for somebody. Amen. What does David do? Uh, talk about in terms of what God had done for him. God gave him skill and understanding about military affairs, didn't he? Yeah. Amen. I mean, that's what verse 34 said. Yeah. Now, this boy was trained to be a shepherd. <laughs> right? He, I mean, what does he know about and a musician? But God gave him all he needed to become a a military strategist. Herding sheep would give you that strategy, help you to do some strategic movement of the sheep and how to protect them. And when it rains, there's a specific thing you have to do. Mm -hmm. If one lags behind, how do you get them involved in the uh, militaristic uh, approach that yeah. they're taking? So that, and then the music to me is something that deals specifically again with strategy mm -hmm. you know that mathematical the notes and how they're placed on um, the sheet of music or it, it, there's something mathematical there is that mathematical piece mm -hmm. that goes along with it and so to me that training really i can see that that training had its value Indeed. in terms of the strategy and the strategic uh, the, the strategic skills he needed in order to be successful yeah, yeah. God preparing him to be yeah. the king that he wanted him to be. Absolutely. In addition to that, uh, in making him the king, it was also in order to, for him to be able to protect the Israelites. Yeah. That was part of that whole whole plan, which goes along with the thought process. Wherever we are, is God's plan for us to use those skills and yeah. whatever 
down the road. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, although we yeah. may not be able to see it right now, right. but somewhere down the road, that's right. That's right. we will use them. That's right. I forget the name of the book, but it's, it's a book that said that every encounter in the life of a believer is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. There's a lesson in it somewhere. <clears throat> sure. Mm -hmm. And so we ought to be drawing from it. Right. Because there's a place down the road where we're going to need it. That's right. Right. That's right. You know, I mean, there's some value in it someplace that mm -hmm. God is giving, yeah. giving to us by that experience. Amen. Verse 36 says, he gave him great swiftness to him. Something about laying the ground, making the ground right for him to, to walk steady. To, to not hesitate. You know, God's put it on your heart. Move on it. You know, it doesn't require a, a deliberation of the 13 elders to <laughs> make a decision about moving on what God's put on your heart. <laughs> you know, because uh, we serve a God who's, who's patient, but he does want the job to get done, right? Yeah. And so if we delay somebody, he, he, he'll have somebody yeah. that's going to want to get it done for him. Mm -hmm. It will get done. 37 says, uh, David says, he gave me victory over my enemies. He doesn't say, I beat my enemies. God gave him victory over his enemies. God used all that time to prepare him. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anybody else in, in biblical history that God treated like that? Took them through Moses. 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 Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Great example. 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. 40 years. Didn't want to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't want to do anything. Take. <laughs> You know, we want it in, in this environment fast, quick, and in a hurry. Amen. We don't want to wait on anything. Yeah. We don't want to wait on anything. How about Joseph? What? Joshua? Joshua. Jonah. Jonah. So God takes his time, right? Takes time to develop his servants. Yes. And, and as you talked about before, we got to be patient and faithful. Mm -hmm. Because he, he's, got a, he's got a blessing always in store for us. We can do it to the end, right? Mm -hmm. What did God ultimately develop in David? Great warrior. Great warrior. Great warrior. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else? Triumphant. Yeah. Triumphant. And, and, and that's in a very positive way. <coughs> it's not yes. triumphant in that he's going over. No. Yeah. God he never showed the victory a great God. leader in, in all of that. Yeah. 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 And, and I get the impression that he was a loving kind of leader. Mm -hmm. Because he's operating out of the characteristics of God. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think uh, Arthur probably uh, alluded to the fact of the, his kindness with Saul when he could have killed him, mm -hmm. with the ball when he could have killed him, and with mm -hmm. Shamil when he could have killed him. Right. Uh, so instead of acting emotionally, mm -hmm. he, was acting uh, he was acting irrationally Rational. in all those situations. Yeah. And you know, uh, when we think about where we were, mm -hmm. when we would have uh, been acting like an idiot, uh, and to where peripherally we are mm -hmm. today, where we are acting as a child of God. That's right. Beautifully put. So, David is, is, is kind of telling us, as, as Harvey's pointing out, that we have an obligation to always be connected to the fact that God is inside of us, right? Amen. 
Wouldn't we love to have uh, a leader like that today? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, let me ask the question this way. Would we even recognize a leader like that today? Mm -hmm. Someone who's compassionate yeah. and who is... You got one in the White House. Huh? You got one in the White House. <laughs> he is compassionate. And nobody oh, sees it. Oh, no, nobody sees it. Nobody. No, no, no. I, I mean, there are, there are people, let me restate that. There are people out there who, who could benefit the nation by recognizing the attributes of, of a leader like David. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 And and the tendency today is to be completely blind about it. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a price to pay for that blindness. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> because uh, as we've said earlier on in our discussion, the nation is punished. Mm -hmm. Because of the the trouble and the and the blindness <clears throat> of the leaf. If David had not anchored himself as an act <coughs> as an active participant in a relationship with God, he wouldn't have accomplished all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So we have to think, uh, considering all of the challenges that that a, a leader like this would have today, and yet still get things done for the the goodness and the goodwill of the people should indicate to us that there's a greater power involved in this thing, right? Praise the Lord. I mean, we, we see the actions of Revelation oh, yeah. being revealed Plain. to us right, right now, don't yeah. we? Amen. I think this is, this is the test of our faith. Okay. And our ability, as Brother Harvey said earlier, that while what we're praying for, God doesn't always take it away, but he teaches us to cope with yeah. it and how to rise above it. And I think if we, if we look at today, 2016, and we think of our country, and we look at our political scenario, and you turn on the TV, if you were not a person of faith, you would have no hope Amen. when yeah. you hear yeah, that's right. the mm. commentary on TV. That's right. that's and that's when you have to say, when you look at all of the idiots lined up and think, <laughs> mm, I voted for 60 years, who do I vote for now? Yeah. That's yeah. when you know God is able. Yes. Amen. You Amen. know that as Amen. stupid as it looks, Amen. Mm, Amen. He Amen. will fix it. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. And, and, and that's, where, that's where he was in David's life, right? Yeah. Because when we look at how did God involve himself in David's life, we see it, right? Oh, yeah. First Samuel uh, 16 said that, that God, first of all, looked down on David. Yes. Yes. And when he looked down on David, what did he do? Called him. Called him. Called him. Yeah. Called him. You know, it, 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 Called him. Yeah. you have to think that uh, a political leader today mm is scrubbed on every side and examined every pore in his body. Mm -hmm. And to survive that has to say that God looked down and lifted somebody up that yes. you couldn't find anything on. Because yes. you know if it was able to be done, it would have been done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so now those that are in darkness are lifting up God, you know, the equivalency of garbage. Because when you examine the life, in fact, you don't even have to examine the life. They are telling you they're lying. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They don't have, they don't have um, 1 Samuel 16, they don't have the insight of God. To, 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 because his, as they say, as he says here, the man looks on the outside. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But they can't tell what the thoughts and intentions are. That's right. Because that's what God looks at. That's right. 
and that that's that, that they gonna miss that they gonna miss that every time. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so, so so when God looked down on David, He was looking at His heart. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Indeed. And then the word says that uh, verse thirty five said He not only looked at, but He bent down. Right. Yeah. That's right. Didn't He? Yes. He bent down and molded David. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, you, you know, we look at the uh, the political maneuverings that have occurred over the past seven to eight years. Somebody molded that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because in spite of all of the challenges that were being faced, somehow they overcame. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, so God bent down and molded. And then it says in verse 16, of our reading that he then reached down and saved wherever he found himself being overwhelmed where he felt like he was boxed in yes. and David knew this right? God pulled him out mm -hmm. I mean we've seen that haven't we yes. we've seen situations just yeah. like that Amen. Amen. and then when he when he Reached down and pulled him out. He lifted him up. Because mm. ultimately he became the greatest king of all. Amen. Lifted him up. Verses 39 through 45. David talks about that. God trusted him with the authority and the glory of the throne. There's some folks we can't trust to have absolute authority. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Not to mention the glory, because if the heads are already so large you can't get through that door, the glory of it all is, is just going to be, you know, you can just forget it. <laughs> Only those who are under authority should ever be given the opportunity to exercise that authority. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then the last part of our study says that uh, God is glorified when we worship Him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Verses 46 through 50 talks Amen. about that. Yeah. David praises God in those passages. Mm -hmm. He knew just like, uh, just like John the Baptist that, mm. that God must increase in order for God to increase what, what, what should happen. We have to decrease. 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 I mean, you got to step off of your high horse. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and walk in the dust that David's talking about what he did with his enemies. <laughs> Jim, Jim, when Jim was in the military, he always used to say, you need to get off your high horse. That was his word. Okay. <laughs> when he left, yeah. they gave him a little high horse. <laughs> <laughs> got you still got it? <laughs> Yeah. That's a good one. Come on down, come on down. Yeah. 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 Because if I have to come up there, you gonna have a problem. <laughs> so, so, so David's forward look then is what? His forward look is that uh, he completely subdued his enemies, mm -hmm. made them his footstool. Verse forty-three. And he believed that his seed was going to exist forever. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He, 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 he perceived that. The word points it out in Hosea 3, verse 5. Christ is called David. And in Psalms 2, verse 6, you remember, God called David his king. My king. Mm -hmm. Made him, molded him, and lifted him up. And we must all then glorify God in, in all of our victories because what we, all the beneficiaries of, all came to us through the sacrifice of Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Did I miss anything? Got it. All minds clear? All right.